Sometimes it can seem like there is so much to do in a PhD that there's no way that you can handle it all. And when this happens, it's really easy to start to neglect yourself, to start to neglect your own self-care. So how can you find the time to exercise, to eat well, to sleep well, to spend time with your friends, or even just to relax for a moment when there are so many things to do? But if you neglect yourself for too long, how can you expect to be able to perform to the level that you need to? How can you perform at your very, very best if you're not looking after yourself? And how can you possibly hope to solve these difficult, complicated problems and questions that arise in your research if you're unhealthy, unhappy, and exhausted? So if you feel like you can't look after yourself, like you simply do not have the time, this is when it is most important to do those things for yourself. So here are some quick suggestions for ways that you can take some self-care. Don't feel like you have to do all of these things. If you just do one, it can make a massive difference. And the last thing I want to do is put you under more pressure that you have to be doing all of these different things. So find what works for you. So self-care tip number one is sleep. Sleep is the absolute foundation of everything. And if you're not getting enough sleep, it can have a whole host of detrimental effects on your health and also, of course, your mental ability. And often people cut back on sleep in order to create more working hours. Ultimately, this is counterproductive because of all of the negative effects. And often it's not the amount of time that you're spending, which is the problem. It's more likely that it's the way that you're approaching the work. And very often the people who are cutting back on their sleep to the point where they're having three or four hours a night, they're not actually getting the positive results in terms of the work that they would hope for. So the work is suffering and they are physically suffering. Everything suffers. So cutting back on sleep is not a sustainable approach. Now, obviously it's more complicated if you have small children. I'm very aware of that but I will give some general tips for improve, improving sleep anyway. One is to avoid caffeine in the afternoon. I used to think I had insomnia. It was basically because I was drinking far too much, far too much coffee. Also avoiding alcohol because even though it can help you get to sleep, it can quite drastically affect the quality of your sleep. Some other things you can do include trying to get up and go to bed at the same time every single day, including the weekends. So if you're getting up super early during the week and then laying in bed till much later at the weekends, this affects your circadian rhythm. It's going to affect the quality and amount of sleep that you get. Another useful tip is in terms of the way that you use light. So if you have your lights on really bright in the evening, then it's giving the signal that it's daytime. It's going to keep you awake longer. So if you dim the lights, if you just use like little lamps in the corners of the rooms that are low down, so you're reducing the level of light in the evening, also avoiding looking at bright screens in the evening, this is going to help you to get to sleep. And also in the mornings, if you try and get outside and get bright light first thing in the morning, this will shift your circadian rhythm earlier and it will also help to establish that kind of regular sleep, regular sleep pattern. If you're interested in more tips on how to improve your sleep, I can highly recommend Andrew Huberman's podcast. He's a neuroscientist from Stanford. He's got several podcast episodes going really deeply into the neuroscience of sleep and how to get better sleep. There's some really fantastic tips and everything that I've just said has come directly, directly from there. So I'll put links to that in the description below. Self-care tip number two is to meditate. So one of the ways that we often get stressed is we have these same thoughts running round and round and round in our heads, and we get caught up in the stories that we tell ourselves. Meditation is basically a way of training yourself to be aware of what is happening in your brain and separating yourself from it a little bit. So you learn to observe your thoughts and your feelings rather than being carried along by them. There are several really good meditation apps. There's loads of stuff on YouTube as well. I can highly recommend Headspace, which is probably the most popular meditation app. And also Sam Harris's Waking Up app is really good as well. Again, I'll put links in the description below. 
Self-care tip number three is to eat well. So what you put into your body has a massive effect on your general health and your well-being. But perhaps more importantly is simply taking the time to do something for yourself, taking a little bit longer to prepare food for yourself and basically to treat yourself well. So it's as much about the intention as the positive effects of the nutrition that you're getting. This is often one of the things that falls by the wayside as soon as you get stressed. And it's so much easier to just buy a frozen pizza or order junk food takeaway. You know, when you're tired, you go for those easy, easy options. So one way to do this, if you find it difficult to find the time to cook, is to make a big batch of food in at the weekend when you've got the time and then you've got lunches or dinners or dinners ready. And you don't necessarily have to do this for every meal, but at least doing it sometimes. So again, I'm not trying to put you under pressure that you should be doing this, but just doing it sometimes, taking that time to do something for yourself, eating well, cooking for yourself is a really good way to do it. Self-care tip number four is to exercise. Now, this doesn't have to be super strenuous. You don't have to go out, go out for a 10 mile run every day. And in fact, it's probably better not to. Just doing gentle exercise to get the blood flowing, get the body moving can be enormously, enormously beneficial. So if you're doing a PhD and you're spending the bulk of your time sitting at a laptop, sitting at a computer, or um, if you're in the lab kind of hunched over, you know, we're not designed to spend our days like that. You know, we're supposed to be kind of hunter gatherers, right? And moving can have a massive effect on your mood. So whatever form works for you, whether it's going for a, a short, gentle, easy run, going for a walk, doing yoga, dancing, just jumping up and down, whatever it is, moving your body is one of the best ways to start taking care of yourself. Self-care tip number five is to work on your personal relationships. So sometimes we get so sucked into the work, it becomes the most important thing. It's just PhD, PhD, PhD. And if something goes wrong in the PhD, like everything is a disaster. So it's really important to have something else, something that is separate, something where you can just be yourself and connect with other people. Uh, you don't want the PhD to be the only thing in your life. And your relationships are something that people often neglect, but are the bedrock of kind of a, a, healthy, a healthy life. We need connection. So if you've been stuck on your own for a really long time and you're just working, 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 reach out and call somebody. I think calling people is much better than just having a WhatsApp conversation and, and, and texting back and forth. You know, just take the time and call somebody. They will appreciate the effort and it just gives you a little bit of an outlet where it's something that's not not PhD work. And, you know, it's just generally important for life to you know, keep those uh, keep those connections. And the worst thing you can do when you're stressed is to isolate yourself. And the final tip, self-care tip number six is to turn everything off. So right now you're watching this video probably on YouTube. And after the video finishes, there will be all kinds of suggested videos for you to watch. There will be all of this information that you could absorb. And some of it, like this video, hopefully is, is useful. Some of those other videos might be useful to you too. And there's always this kind of craving for more stuff, more stuff, more stuff, more stuff. And these platforms, they're designed to keep you hooked, to present you with more stuff that they know you will probably like. They're optimized in that, in that way. But it creates this stress. If you're constantly bombarded by incoming information or content and you never take time just to turn off, literally, then you don't have time to process your thoughts. So when you go to bed at night, that's the first opportunity where you don't have any incoming information and again, this is going to feed back into the quality of your sleep because that will be when you start going over and over and over things that you're stressed about from the day. So taking some time, maybe 20 minutes, just turn everything off, turn your phone off or put it on airplane mode, close the laptop, turn the TV off and just take 20 minutes and just 
be with your own with your own thoughts. Some people will find this quite quite difficult. So if you've got devices around you, maybe get out of the house, go for a walk for 20 minutes or something and change that default that default habit of constantly being being attached. Um, it can be difficult at first, but once you get used to it, it's really, really liberating just to be disconnected in that way. So before you disconnect, if you like this video, please do hit subscribe and the notification um, notification bell so you know when new videos come out. Also, give it a thumbs up so that other people can find it. It helps with YouTube's algorithm to you know promote the promote the video. Also, if you know anybody who you think would benefit from this, please do forward it to them. I think it's far better to send it to people individually than to just post it on your Facebook page or share it on, share it on Twitter. Make it personal. Send it to someone who you think could really, really benefit from it. And also, if you like more information on what I do, or if you'd like more detailed, um, more detailed guidance, check out my websites. There are two of them. There's jameshaytonphd.com, where I have hundreds of blog posts uh, giving all kinds of PhD-related advice. And also the PhD Academy, where we have more in-depth, detailed courses and also weekly Zoom calls with me. And we have a whole community of PhD students as well. Again, I will put links to those in the description below. So that's it from me. Look after yourselves and I'll see you next time.